I would think it would be a good idea to strip this down now <laughs> rather than putting it on because it is well I, some people call it rust I don't know but um, yeah it's not looking too good so let's put this on the bench and we'll show you how to strip this down so to get this off to get this to pieces uh, like I said before these are quite common on Range Rovers and Discoveries and Defenders except I was noticing under here this one's got a spring inside which they don't usually have uh, the common faults, I don't know if I'm going to get this apart the common faults is they, they seize in this bush here so we've got to get these two screws out that might prove difficult in fact looking at it everything's going to be difficult so what I'm going to do first of all I'm going to take off the cover but whilst I'm doing that I'm going to spray it with deep creep and hopefully that does something let's get those screws out I've got the little split pin out of here and already the deep creeps working a bit it won't pivot too much but I'm going to knock this pin out of here and then I'm going to try and get rid of these two well not get rid of them but try and unloosen these screws here and they're going to be tight so I might have to use a few tricks but I'll tell you which one works rather than boring you going through hours and hours of trying things When you've got some stubborn screws to get out, like this one, I've got this one out, and they really are tight. You really need a nice snug fitting screwdriver. And then you put them in the vise, or sort of like this. Take your hammer, make sure this is tight. I'm not going to do it now and hit the top of the screw a couple of sharp taps All right. then mat gas warm it up a bit not too much because you don't want to, uh, to melt anything Put it back in the vise and with your old favourite screwdriver see there's a slot on there that's for a 10 millimetre put that on, keep pressure on the top and out it comes God, I surprise myself sometimes so that's out, something that I never thought was going to come out because they are usually buggers so back to the bench you got the screws out, I've just tapped this already so I know it's going to come out but just tap the shaft and hopefully the bushing comes out, it's, it's tight in here but what we can do now is give this a bit of a buff up this piece here, give it a bit of a buff then we can wind this backwards and forwards and we'll eventually get all that locked to pieces you can see it's all coming out it just takes a little bit of time but we've got to get this piece out before we can get this piece out so you can see how I've set it on a it's offset a little bit so I'm going to clean this up in the wire wheel and then tap this shaft down now when you tap shafts down use a little punch uh, this one's got a little center dimple in it so you could actually use a centre punch and put it in the hole and then tap it down the reason is if you go like it like a bull in a china shop and start hammering this down here what you can do is peen, and peen over the end of the shaft like a rivet then you'll never get it out so I'm going to clean it up and then we're going to get that bush out sometimes I amaze myself because I just thought I'll put it to one side and I'll try and tap it and it just flew out that stuff, where has it gone now? I don't get sponsored by them, I should do because I use gallons of it Deep Creep, again it wasn't named, it wasn't named after me but it really gets into a lot of uh, bits and pieces so now I can take that bushing off back to the bench this time and then we'll take it off
I hear what you're saying. Why didn't you clean this shaft up? Well, I was waiting for you to spot that, so I'm going to clean this up because now I have to knock the shaft all the way through the other side. It will become clearer in a minute. There is a little bit of a messing about, but I'm quite confident this is all going to work, even though it looks rusty. When you've knocked the shaft through here, you'll find that this little piece comes out and there's two little nylon bushes in there. Can you see those? Don't lose them. Now, before you can get anything else out, you see this is why you've got to move this shaft backwards and forwards because it's, it's kind of hidden. There's a little tiny circlip in there that we've got to get out and that will allow this arm to come through this way. Yeah, it does. Or does it go through the other way? Anyway, it won't, it, we, we can't get it out with that arm in. It's impossible because the arm's hitting here. So that's the next thing. Now we might have to break that circlip. It'll more than likely snap. But let's have a go. I say how it works now. This is, this is the old design. We tap this back through. The circlip did break, but the circlip holds the handle in. Uh, it holds the little bushing in and then the handle comes out through the top. Now that was easy enough wasn't it? So now all we've got to do is knock this shaft out of here which probably will come out anyway. Um, where's my punch gone? Here. See if we can pop this through. There we go. It's quite easy to remember which way they go around these shafts because one's got a hole in it and the hole goes through the, this, this fork here so that's kind of easy. I'll just a couple more taps and that'll come out. There we go. Shaft comes out the end. This comes out of... Oh, there's my punch. This comes out of here. And this little spring clip comes off there because I've already taken the bolts out. So the next thing, I might just pop across to the sandblaster and just blast this out. Clean these bits up. Uh, if you notice this bit here has got little dimples on it. And like I say, this is the old design, the new one didn't have that. Uh, and this is to keep that little, where's it going? This little spring clip will ride up and down there, where are you going, there you go, that, that'll ride up and down there to keep that, it's like a detent, just like in the spring. So I'm going to clean these bits up and then we'll put them back together. So, putting this bad boy back together, eh? Right, let's, I've cleaned this out, sandblasted it and cleaned it, so it's kind of nice. I didn't sandblast these bits because they were kind of small and they'd spring all over the place, so I didn't bother with those. Now that goes on the outside like that and that goes in a minute this will only go this piece will only go one way so put it on and there you go and then you can put a couple of nuts on that so I'll fasten these nuts down because again this is boring and we'll come back. Inside these pieces here and here there are some little o-rings. So I'm going to put some new o-rings back in. They're kind of tricky to get in because they're sort of deep so you'll have to sort of poke them in with a little pointy thing like this and try and get the o-rings in. They're not impossible to do but uh, Tricky, just like everything. Of course, they won't go in when you want them to go in. Well, it's not too bad. So that one's in. Next, we put one in the end of here. I bet a lot of people didn't know there was o rings in there. Well, you do now. Ah, what a mucky job, eh? So now we get the o-ring to go in, which it probably won't. I'm 
tricky. Wait a minute. So I got the O-ring in by pushing it back in with the original shaft, like that. However, there was a little burr on here, so I took that little burr off with a grinder. I should have used a file, but I'm too lazy. So the next thing, we're going to sort of put the O-ring on, a new O-ring on this outer piece, this uh, bushing. There we go, that's one on. And then another one on here. I didn't clean this one up too well, but... You know, and probably nobody will ever use this gearbox, but I'll show you how to do it. So that, that's all done. Next thing. I'm going to put it together some, with some grease. So we're going to put some grease inside that shaft, in, inside that bushing, and we're going to work that grease. Oh, work it, baby. That's right. We're going to work that so we know that that is a nice, smooth fit. That's at one end, and then we're going to do the same in the other end, in this bushing here. We'll put some grease in the bushing, see like that, and then we're going to force it through and make sure that that works okay. Now you are going to get a bit messy with this, so if you don't like getting your hands dirty, well, maybe you should be an accountant or something like that. That's that done. So now we're going to try and put this back together again the best we can. There is a ball in here and a bushing. Now because this is old I didn't really take it to part that much much more because there wasn't much need but I'm just going to give it a quick blast with brake cleaner get any remaining dust and dirt out again blast it away from where you weren't working we'll get some grease and we'll force it. This is sometimes when you do bushes and stuff like that, you, you can actually force it with your fingers and watch it come through the other side. And when it does, you know it's nicely lubricated all the way. So I'm going to keep on doing that. There we go. So that's all right. That's nicely lubed up. Lovely. So, how do we put this together? I'll probably have to run this video back and see how it went. <clears throat> so, we're going to put... Wait a minute. We're going to put this shaft in... No, we're going to put this piece in here first. We'll put a bit more grease inside this casting because it is a bit dry at the moment. that into there. The O-ring makes it a bit tight, there's a nice snappy fit. Then we're going to put the shaft in, like this. There we go, that's in there. And then we're going to put the shifter through. Now I bet you've forgotten which way it goes round. Well, this is always on the right hand side, so the shifter points towards the back. Just like that. Alright, so that's how it goes. So now we're going to push that bushing through. Push the shaft back a little bit. Now I got a brand new, uh, the old snap ring, the old circuit wasn't looking in the best of health. So what I did was I uh, found a new one. Uh, sometimes when you're doing jobs like this, Always handy to have on hand uh, selection boxes, of, just like at Christmas, a selection box, but a various size uh, o rings and snap rings and things like this because you never know when you're going to get stuck. Unfortunately, as you can see, all this is a mismatched box because they fell on the floor and we had to just quickly put, pick them up. That's another job for another day. So I'm going to put this snap ring on here. Maybe a bit tricky, but I really need my vice. Just, just wait a minute, I'll go back to my vice. I thought you'd gone there for a minute. So the next thing we're going to do is just put this end bushing in. Again, against that o-ring and into that housing. And we might need just a bit of a tappet to get in. There we go. 
line up the screws put the screws in I'm not going to tighten them up yet, I'll do them later and the next thing these little split bushings again grease, 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 grease is the word like John Travolta he probably does his own Land Rovers and uh, this, this shaft has a habit of turning around so we've got to get everything sort of lined up now which is a bit tricky not impossible so we need that damn we need that to go that way like that so put your bushings in put your split bushings in like that one two like that drop that in split pin uh, roll uh, cut uh, clevis pin sorry clevis pin and that is all back working again isn't that good it's quite tight this one because it's got that flipping spring on the side but anyway I'm going to tighten the screws up and then we've got to put the cover on and then that will be it Next we can put the rubber cover on. Now the rubber cover's got a, like a spacer on it. And it sort of goes, where does it go? It goes like that look. Now the rubber itself, on because there's a metal uh, support plate here. And then some rubber. Now unfortunately on the bottom side there was a gasket and I haven't got one. And sort of like it's not a non, it's not a critical thing. So what I'm just going to do, I'm going to put some high sill on it. Hopefully, if it hasn't seen so This is what it's like. Eh? Let's have a look. So I've got the cover back on, put a little bit of high low sill around there. That should be nice and watertight. If the gasket's got any signs of leaking, you know, splits and things like that, then replace it. But this one's good. So the next thing, grease. Grease it up. Honestly. Get some grease in there. Grease is cheap. Spoon it in. Because this doesn't want to be done for another few years. As I tried to mention before, this uh, this fitting is quite common uh, on automatics, like the Disco's automatics. And because they never get used, because North America, nobody, ever, nobody even, they all, you know, they all want four-wheel drives in North America, and they don't know what this bit does. The, probably some of them have gone out the showroom, they've, they've forgotten completely what it does. So what happens is, it never gets used, but for the time they very, really, really need it, and then the damn thing's seized up. Which is a, which is a bit of a bugger, I've lost my scissors now. See me, wait a minute, let's see if I can find my scissors, oh there they are. So because this is all greased up, it would be a complete waste of time to put uh, high Lamar or anything like that on because we're going to put a new gasket on that top cover so um, what I'm going to do with this one just, some, just out of difference because it's not under pressure or anything like this we're going to grease this gasket and again it's just a matter of softening the the material so it clamps but because there's no sort of pressurized water pressurized oil or anything like that it doesn't make it it's not it's not the end of the world so I'm going to fit that onto, oh, wait a minute, how does this go? That onto there like that. And then we'll screw it on the top. Hey, we're nearly finished. Don't, don't fall asleep yet, we're nearly finished. I might actually just cut that piece out and do it as a separate video. In fact, I think I will, because it was a bit long. So if you haven't seen this, this is nearly the, this is the end of the video. <laughs> but if you're still watching the LT85, well, I've rebuilt this piece. You'll, you'll get it. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs>